presence, Lord, to uh, guide us in the name of Jesus Christ, we believe and pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie, for taking the opportunity to pray with us uh, this evening. So um, a very warm welcome to everyone who has managed to join us so far. Um, we believe that uh, many other people will be coming on board as we continue. And even those who are not able to join us uh, here will still be able to catch the discussion um, because uh, as a result of uh, the recording, we'll be able to share this on YouTube and uh, many other places where we can get to hear and learn more. Uh, I will kindly request uh, us all to put off our microphones unless uh, we are speaking so that we reduce on the interference. So once again, welcome to Unleash Hour tonight. And we are privileged to be with uh, engineer Musinguzi Begumisa all the way from Uganda. Uh, this is uh, very exciting for me uh, to be having a moment to talk and share with uh, Begumisa, who I know has a lot uh, to share with us. And uh, we are going to, uh, I know there's a lot that we are going to learn and a lot that we are going to uh, go through in the next few minutes. So, Engineer, uh, you're welcome to introduce yourself. Uh, tell us uh, who is uh, Begumisa. I don't even know whether I'm, pro I'm pronouncing the name yeah, right. Thank you. Mother did, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Musinguzi uh, Begumisa. I'm a Christian, first and foremost. I'm a husband. I'm a father to three beautiful girls. I'm a leader in several spaces. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a mentor, I'm an author, and several other things. Yeah, I live in Uganda, Kampala, and uh, I work with a Prowse Engineering Group. Have I left out anything, Sam? <laughs> I think uh, that's as good as uh, we can go. Definitely, there's a lot. Maybe the only thing you need to tell us is uh, what book is this you have written? You've said you're an, uh, 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 an author. I think it's good for people to know uh, the name of your book. OK. Uh, let me requalify my qualification as an author. I am an accidental author, but <laughs> But uh, I've written a book called uh, In Search of Sanity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's a good book. You should call me again. We talk about it if time allows. But it's a good book that uh, talks about my journey with um, bipolar disorder yes. and how I have managed to scale it with the help of God. Yeah. Wow. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah, so tonight, uh, the focus of our discussion is uh, majorly on entrepreneurship. Uh, that's why I called the title uh, From Employee to Employer, uh, which is the, the story of uh, engineer here. Uh, and uh, to start us off, I want to post a question uh we we have all had uh, all those stories about uh, how young children start entrepreneurship with those lemonade stands uh, some of them start with uh, selling sweets others uh, you had stories of making bee you know uh, making uh, ornaments out of beads and all that so uh when we think entrepreneurship uh, what's your own story? Where did it all start for you? Uh, okay, wow. when you are talking about the lemonade stories, I remember just last week, I think, I saw a meme that was um, uh, flying around the, the internet yeah. about how people, people talk about entrepreneurs and how they started with nothing and they have something. 
Yes. Some guy said, no, I started without land and I have a school. <laughs> As in, <laughs> but my story, my story of entrepreneurship uh -huh. uh, starts way back. I think I can remember high school, high school, S6 vacation. Yeah. We're looking at what to do with S6 vacation. And uh, we started two investment clubs, uh -huh. uh, bought some shares, done big bank and stuff. And yeah. because of so many circumstances around us, those two investment clubs are, are no longer uh, in existence. Mm -hmm. And the lesson I learned from that one yeah. is that if you're going to do a venture, you need to be like-minded. If you have if someone's going to be your business partner, yeah. you've got to be like-minded. The, same the second venture that I remember along my journey of entrepreneurship, am I clear? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, was uh, in university. Yeah. So I had been assigned to a hall, a hall of residence, mm -hmm. and I just had a meal card. So go eat ugali and beans. And at some time I said, no, can't I be creative? Bought this, got faculty allowance and bought these call boxes. Those call boxes. Yes. And guys would pay to make calls. That time uh -huh. phones were not so common. And so that one also died because there was not good supervision. The yes. lady we had got ate all the money and we couldn't afford the rent space in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that one for, for university. Yes. The other one was, uh, and the lesson, of, the lesson I learned, you've got to supervise the business. You can't just give it somewhere and let it fly on its own. Yes. The, the second lesson, because there are many, but let me just give four. The second, the other one was later. I decided to form an internet cafe. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now you see the lesson I learned from the. It also died. Okay. <laughs> Some days. Two lessons I learned from here is that location is key mm -hmm. because yeah. I bought this internet cafe. Uh -huh. and uh -huh. Just a minute. Let me mute some down, people. Down in Kampala, where they are uh, mechanics. <laughs> No, just a minute. There was no market. Uh, just a minute. Uh, location is very engineer. Kabisa. Uh, engineer. Yes, sir. Now you can proceed. Uh, I think somebody had joined the call and the uh, mic was on. I uh, know it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. So you are. Yeah. So that the one, internet the cafe. internet cafe also died because. Uh, it, yeah. When, when you have an internet cafe and you put it with mechanics downtown Kampala, guys don't know how to use internet. <laughs> so that one also died. So what I learned from that one was location. Location is very key. Yes. The other thing yes. is that that internet cafe. Mm -hmm. I in a lot of money. I just got furnished. You know how these internet cafes are eh? of those days. Yes. The nice computers and stuff like that. And I lost all the money. Mm -hmm. And the other lesson I learned from that is that when you're starting, you start small. I could yeah. have used two computers, a small room, tested the market, and then kept on growing. Yeah. The last one along my journey, there are many, there are many, but the last one along my journey in entrepreneurship was now when I wanted to go big and register a company with, with colleagues and people that I know around. Two, yeah. the first one we registered was called Twintech, Trinity Technical Services. And here with this one, we were, we were not organized really. Every, we had the paperwork and everyone would start their own th their thing, yeah. eat the money when they got a job, it collapsed, it did not. Uh, grow to be what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and many others, but um, that's my journey with entrepreneurship. I've tried, failed, tried, failed, until the level that I am at now, I am still on a journey. It's not yet work accomplished, but I yeah. have a few lessons down my path. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, that's very good to know about uh, where it all started. So, 
I know one of the things that uh, many of the people who've joined this call want to know is uh, how did you end up leaving uh, a job in government, uh, a well-paying job, a secure career and all that to venture into entrepreneurship? So first you can tell us uh, what is it you are doing uh, in uh, government and uh, you know how how did this uh, how did this come about? Why did you make the choice uh, to venture into entrepreneurship? Okay, my uh, my journey with well, and and uh, consultancy had come a long way, really. When I finished university, did a few courses and started. Now there was time when they were recruiting men of integrity into the roads authority mm -hmm. of Uganda. Mm -hmm. And then I was recruited to head the quality control department at yeah. UNRWA, Uganda National Roads Authority. Yeah. Uh, now it was a good job, very good job, highly paying. I was traveling all over the world, benchmarking, good money, progressing. But for me, my reason for living mm -hmm. was I had a gap. I had a, a longing in my heart. Eh? Yes. Because um, let me see if I can put it well. You, you see when as men, as men, I think some you can agree, when you're yeah. hitting mid thirties, mm -hmm. not yet in the midlife crisis in the forties, but you start asking yourself, yeah. what am I even on this earth? for yes. what is my calling what is my purpose mm -hmm. is it about getting on planes and traveling all over mm -hmm. those are the questions that plague me yeah? yes and so in in a in a bid to answer those questions i went on my knees i went to the source <laughs> mm -hmm. and prayed mm -hmm. and fasted i would do 40 day fasts i would do i pray in tongues endlessly yeah. and uh and he answers the lord answers so he answered and told me and told me what mm -hmm. i was supposed to do mm -hmm. uh, and the first step was to resign from my job i have to put a cap in here <laughs> not every voice that speaks is from god <laughs> you see eh? uh -huh. so one the three principles really that I, I, I got from this was that I got the instruction in March yeah. to leave, mm -hmm. but I left in the same Okay. You see, yeah. yeah. Uh, during this period, I was you know, I had to I had to ask my wife. <laughs> yes. How what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. She says, You you man, <laughs> what are you crazy? Are you, what are you think crazy doing leaving such a job? Mm -hmm. Are you crazy? <laughs> Yeah. So, so I I um I have I had to I had to bring it like four times. You know, mm -hmm. I told God. You know what, God? Mm -hmm. If you've told me, and mm -hmm. I'm one with my wife, you could yes. tell how so. Hmm? You get? Eh? I like. So that. you're testing the prophecy. I like so that. You're testing like the that. prophecy. It's like you know, it, guys who are dating, eh? mm -hmm. and a, a gentleman comes and tells you, man, ah, you look good. God told me to marry you. Hey, if he told me to marry, let him tell me also. <laughs> so that we are all in sync. Yes. <laughs> you see, eh? Yes. And so over a period, I think I had to bring across scripture as well and said, you know what? A matter is established by two or three witnesses. Mm. So we got a few of our Christian friends. We are, yeah. It is when we were sure that I was doing the right thing that I placed the resignation. Yeah. So my living, my living at Unra was not in, not uh, external. It was my internal processing. Yeah. And I have to say, it is the best career decision I made. Wow. Ever. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. So um, I I know I know you started uh, on your journey of entrepreneurship quite a. Uh, a long time ago, but did you have any fears or doubts uh, about failing? And uh, if your answer is yes, 
uh, why did you choose to go ahead anyway? I know you've answered a bit of that in your prior response, but uh, maybe there's something you'd want to add. Did you have any fears or doubts? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Samuel. Oh. <laughs> First of all, that putting in that resignation. <laughs> yes. It, it just took, I was like a nervous wreck, really. So, but, but, um, that was the first part of the fear, mm -hmm. the anxiety about making the decision, making the jump mm. was the biggest level of fear. Mm -hmm. But then you get here, yeah, let's say now, certain times, certain times people come with business ideas, well thought out, he will tell you our projections, cash flows and everything is in place. Mm. He hits the market the first month, there is no one who has a boat. Mm -hmm. The second month and the third month. So those early years, first yes. two, two and a half years were tough. Uh -huh. tough. Mm -hmm. Because there are times, because you are an employee before. Mm. So you sit down and wait for the boss to work out your salary, the benefits, health insurance, <laughs> and it is regular. Yes. Now, Sam, you come to this site. You have to do it yourself. You are the employer. Yes. You have bills to pay you have taxes to pay you've got workers to pay yes. sometimes there's actually no money to pay mm -hmm. you see eh? so yes. that's when the doubts actually come did mm. god actually tell me from more mm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. am i actually doing the right thing was i a fool to leave my high paying job yes so i've had those moments but the reason why i did not uh i mean i had offers later like after one year we need someone to fix this, to have a project here. I said, no, I'm not going back to be employed <laughs> because yes. I know God told me. Um, and so that camp, why I didn't go back was because I was comfortable and firm and at rest in his word. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. You yes, see, yeah? Yes, yes. So I was just, in fact, there's a scripture that was uh, very, very, very pertinent for me during that time, and you know it very well. Uh, I think everyone on the call mm -hmm. is that those who wait, those who wait on the Lord, he shall mm -hmm. renew their strength. They'll fly on wings like eagles, they'll run and not go well. Mm -hmm. Holding on to Jesus, holding yes. on to scripture, and knowing that what you are in, he started. And when he starts, he accomplishes. That's how faithful he is. Wow, wow, wow. You know, that's, that's, that, that's very good to know because uh, sometimes you make the mistake of thinking that, you know, uh, the assurance that God uh, is the one who started this means that there will be no doubt, means that nothing will come up that will make you question uh, whether you're on the right track and all that. So basically what you're telling us is that uh, those moments come when you're questioning whether you're on the right track. Yes, they do, they do. Okay, so, but uh, here you are, how many years is this now since you went into business full-time? It's coming to the fourth year. Mm -hmm. Not so long, it's coming yeah. to the fourth year. Yeah, in four, four, four years and uh, in four years you are now running four different businesses so what what are they and I, I know you mentioned uh, was it protec or uh, something you uh, so yeah uh, tell us uh, what they are and what they do okay are there four i mean i just i just one thing i i wanted to tell the listeners is mm -hmm. that um Sometimes it's good to focus, yeah? Focus, yes. always tell us about focus, get a niche. So I decided to focus mm. on engineering because that's what I studied, that's what, those are my circles. Yes. So I looked at the, the different problems because if you're an entrepreneur, you're looking for a problem to solve, mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. Because people pay for solving mm -hmm. problems. Yes. So the first one is called Prowess Consulting Engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, now that one is consulting work, surveying, uh, topographic, 
arrangements, um, architectural work, yes, supervision of engineering works, designs mainly, uh -huh. consultants. Yes. That's the first one. The second one is called Energy Max Uganda Limited. Mm -hmm. One does supplies of engineering materials. Yes. And not any, not any that are culverts and no, 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 no. Mm. I, I thought and said, no, you provide something that is not common, eh? that people yeah. will look for and they will know you in the market for. So I bring material from China, from Turkey mm. uh, for swamp treatment, wow. geotextiles, geogrids, uh, guardrails, gabion boxes, gabion mattresses, mm -hmm. that kind of, of uh, swamp work. Yes. The third one is a uh, Prowse Equipment Limited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this one does heavy equipment, mm -hmm. uh, uh, excavators, backhoes, dozers, those heavy, heavy, fast moving equipment, mm -hmm. machinery. Mm -hmm. And then the last one mm -hmm. is called From Geolab. Mm -hmm. Now, From Geolab, uh, I, I specialize in materials engineering mm -hmm. uh, as an engineer. So I'm, I do geotech, I can analyze slopes and stuff like that tests mm -hmm. uh, bitumen, asphalt, uh, concrete. Mm. So now I said one of the companies will we, we do that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. So all of those are the four, but yeah. all of them are in the engineering, engineering uh, segment. Uh, ah. sector, really. Yeah, yeah. One of the one of the lessons that uh, I learned from uh, reading uh, the richest man in Babylon is that uh, he he was very particular. The writer was very particular. I think his name is George Glasson uh, mm -hmm. on somebody focusing on an area where they have expertise. That uh, it's it's not it's not just about uh, starting a business. But uh, are you starting a business? where you understand what it is you're doing, or are you able to hire people uh, who understand what it is you're trying to do? You don't just go into business because uh, you have the money to invest. So, and I can see uh, you are a very good student of that uh, in your own way. So um, this question you <laughs> answered uh, in the past in a way, but uh, let me bring it up again. Uh, have you ever failed at uh, any venture before uh, your success came? And uh, what lessons did you learn and how did you manage to bounce back? I am not yet successful, Samuel. It's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think four years is enough to say <laughs> that you're successful. It's a work in progress, really. Yes, but you have some but, um, one, one, one of those that comes to mind Yes. Mm. Uh, one, 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 one project that comes to mind with all the different companies have different lessons of failed work and you pick yourself up again mm. uh, is the equipment, the equipment arm, yeah? Yeah. Prowse yeah. equipment. Yeah. Now, I get this, this job mm -hmm. in, the, in the West, Midwest. Yeah. And I'm supposed to do some work there with the equipment. Mm -hmm. And I had started doing like uh, work for three three weeks mm. to look down the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now remember, guys, already on site. Yes. Those machines take fuel. Sorry, are, I missed. I, mi I, mi I missed that. Those machines take. If you do. Are those machines take fuel, fuel, yes. daily fuel. No, when you cost at an eight hour day, yeah, about 180 to 200 liters of diesel. Uh -huh. You see, eh? yes, now you have fuel stock that side, you have operators who don't know about integrity. It was a bad loss, Ooh. it was a bad loss. Yeah. We're talking about hundreds of millions sinking. Oh, yeah. boy. Uh, but you know, you've signed a contract, you know, you've signed a contract and you've got to fulfill it. They don't want to know whether it's COVID or whatever. Yes. I had to pick myself up mm -hmm. and go and finish the work. Yeah. And uh, 
learn, learn. I don't even, I have a, a whole, a whole of lessons learned from that. Mm. That's one of them mm. and many others really. But the point is, yeah. if you are convicted enough, and the thing is why, why, why I, I see many of my friends or many people around Africa or East Africa get into a business and run out of it is because they don't have the why. The why is not strong. Yeah. I'll tell you the why later as we conclude, maybe give me an opportunity. Mm. If you have the why that is going enough, mm. when you fail, you've got to come out. You've got to, because you don't have an option. It's mm. about living, it's about fulfilling your purpose. Mm. It's about wanting to be emptied completely by the time you sign out of the year. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, so the, 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 the big thing is the why. Why are you in business? Uh, can you hear me, engineer? Yes, I'm here. I think I lost you. No, I'm saying so. The big thing is the why. The why? It's not even actually in the business only. It's even in other areas of life. Yes. If you answer the why, why are you a pastor? <laughs> For example, why are you an administrator? Mm. So when the turbulence comes, yeah. you have some anchoring. Yeah. Ah, nice, 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 nice. So uh, at this point, I would like to ask, uh, what's in the pipeline for you as an, uh, as an entrepreneur? What, what are you working towards as you go into the future? Because one of the things you've mentioned is that uh, you are still well on your way. There's a journey. So where are you going? <laughs> now, uh, let me see if I can give you a good answer. But I, two things. Number one, yeah, I am doing business mm -hmm. to advance the kingdom of God. See, so I've got some private targets that I need to hit in the yeah. particular area that the Lord has placed upon my heart to finance. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm looking at scaling slowly, slowly, slowly. Uh, I've learned that uh, sometimes when, when you explode too fast, you burn. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so slowly, one day at a time, yeah. as I seek, as I seek him, whichever direction I'm supposed to take. And uh -huh. let me just drop the scene now. Yes. About how important it is, mm -hmm. even in your waiting time, yeah. to pray. Yeah. 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 There's this particular time, it's just an example I, th I thought about. I normally wake up at 5, 5 a.m. and have an hour of worship. Mm -hmm. You know, just get up and yeah. tell God how good he is for one hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I I've already lined up the program for the day. Yeah, I have my uh, reflector jacket and, and boots, and I'm getting out of the prayer room. Yes, and uh, he whispers and says, "No, I don't want you to go to this site. Huh? Mm -hmm. Go to the other office." Mm -hmm. I said, "No way! I'm already dressed. The jam is building up." Hmm? Mm -hmm. But you know, I've learned slowly, as many of you have. <laughs> that sometimes when you disobey <laughs> yes it hurts you <laughs> so I, I just reluctantly reluctantly went back mm -hmm. moved all the clothes dressed up a fresh put on a tie and went to the to office. That office I had some work some consultancy work there. Mm -hmm. do you know who I met at the entrance of that door <laughs> in that office mm -hmm. it was the MD who had been away for for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. Hey, engineer, how are you? You finished your assignment. Have you been paid? I said, no, I've been demanding this invoice for a long time. He shouted at the accountant, Brian, Brian, please sort this man today. Okay, engineer, I'm busy. I'm going for a meeting. Ah. Mm -hmm. What, 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 you see? what you had been what you had been uh, asking for forever <laughs> yeah. 
just one. And you know, the lesson I've learned, let, yeah. it can cut across to every area of our lives. Mm -hmm. Obey. Mm -hmm. Obey the Lord. Sometimes people feel, when you tell them I've heard the Lord speak, it's like you're weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get it? Eh? Yes. But he speaks. If he told Moses and told him to do this, if he told David, go and do this, you know, and we are mm -hmm. in the same category as children of God. Yes. Then he has to speak to us as Very well. True. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Wow. I um one one thing that is coming out very clearly from my conversation with you is that uh, um your your relationship with God is very critical to what you're doing as an entrepreneur. And uh, you are not just an entrepreneur for the sake of being an entrepreneur. You are also really focused on uh, uh, being a blessing to the kingdom of God uh, from your perspective as an entrepreneur. That I, I can see very clearly. And that's very encouraging. Uh, yes, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I mean, uh, Marse and uh, Jackie, who are, I think they've read my book, they know how far I have come. They yes, know, you, yes. Know, you know, yes. When you've been in the gutter, as, hmm? mm -hmm. it's the heart of gratitude, really, that pushes you to want to help out as much as you can. Yeah, so wow. I think for me, it's it's about I don't even know how to put it, but being appreciative for what he, he's done really for me as an individual uh -huh. and uh, trying to be useful <laughs> in as much as you can. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's uh, for for me. That's uh, stewardship. Uh, that is. Um making making use of uh, everything really that god has given you uh to serve him and to serve other people because in serving other people uh we are serving god so finally my final question before maybe we invite any questions or reactions from the mm -hmm. audience would be what 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 is your advice for aspiring entrepreneurs and practicing entrepreneurs. Uh, you can separate that or you can say something that cuts across. 